Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now, one of the most common questions I get asked all the time, either via email, on our Discord and of course on our live streams, is what are some of the best things we can do to increase our performance and FPS in the simulator. Well, that's what we are going to be having a look at today, but not so much what it is that increases them. More accurately, what is it that affects them? We're going to be taking a look at how different things like the weather, the traffic injection, the level of detail, the particular scenery and the airports, photogrammetry, all of these are known factors which cause issues with our FPS, causing them to drop. But in our video today, I want to have a little detailed look and see what it is that affects FPS the most. Now, of course, everybody has a different PC setup. My PC specifications can be found in the video description down below. So what works for me might be a little bit different for you. That is where I'm asking for your help as well. So please do leave a comment on this video down below, letting us know what your biggest FPS and performance draining add-ons are. What are the best case scenarios for you? What are the worst case scenarios for you? And so hopefully by the end of this video, we will know what the biggest draining factors in the sim are what we can do to avoid them and hopefully get the best performance possible. The key thing with an experiment like this is to try and maintain a constant, only changing one variable at a time. And to do this, I've chosen to begin our experiment here in Ireland and we're at Kerry Airport. Now, this is not an add-on airport for me. This is completely default scenery, no photogrammetry scenery around it or anything like that. We've just got the beautiful rolling Irish countryside, as you can see in the distance. So let's turn everything off and see what our base FPS is. Before we go any further then, I will quickly show you my graphics settings so you can screenshot these if you wish. This will be the settings by which they will remain the same throughout our entire experiment in this video. Okay, let's just apply, save those, go back, resume, and see where our FPS settles. And you can see it's just uh, just hitting around the 60 FPS mark. This is with no traffic, no real scenery installed, no weather. I'm only in the Cessna 152 as well, so it's not a highly detailed aircraft add-on. And so this is about as plain and vanilla as the sim gets. So it's from this point we can start adding new variables into the equation to see what the FPS does. The first thing I'm going to play around with is some of the traffic, not airliner traffic, but cars and ground workers at the airport. Now, this airport, as I said, it isn't a massive one, and there are a few country roads and things like that around it. So if I now go to our traffic options, this is what everything is set to by default. But let's just crank all of this up, which we probably wouldn't ever want to do, but it'll be interesting to see if the FPS are affected. We'll also pop on the road vehicles to maximum, apply and save, go back, and see if that has really changed anything. So even here on a very isolated part of the world, you can see it has just had a one or two FPS hit, and there's not really much down there. A quick look around, we will see we've got a small default generic airfield and we've got now just extra cars coming down the uh, the road that runs alongside it nothing major but imagine this in a much more built up area that is clearly going to have some kind of effect okay i'm going to put those back to where they were and then we will check out something else Okay, so let's have then a look at our level of detail. Of course, there's not that much here, so I don't expect this to make too much of a difference, but it will be interesting to see. Let's go back to our graphic settings, have a look at the terrain level of detail, which I've got set at to 200 at the moment, and see just how much turning this all the way up, doubling it, in fact, goes. And if we apply that, and see what has happened. Well, that is a huge impact. That has dropped us 15 or so FPS and in an area where there is very little of interest. 
Okay, so with our FPS reset, just noting we're now holding around 63, 64. Next, we're going to go and have a look and see what the object's level of detail does and how that affects it. I've got mine set about halfway at 120. Let's drag that all the way up to 200 and see what knockdown we get from 64. Again, not that much around here, so that actually hasn't made any issues. We'll be interesting to see that a little bit later on in the video when we go to somewhere with a bit more detail. Okay, so now then let's have a play with the weather. At the moment, we've just got clear skies. Nothing is set, holding around 64. Let's open up our weather dialog and just bring in, to start with, some broken clouds. A fair sort of middle ground. If we then throw those in there, see whereabouts that settles, you can see that clouds do have a big effect on the sim. That's dropped us down about 22 FPS. Now, of course, the level of clouds that you've got there is going to make a difference. If I reduce the coverage, I'm sure we'll see the FPS getting a little bit better as it has done there. Again, let's just remove that a little bit, see what happens. And you can see there is a correlation between what we've got in the sky to what our FPS is doing. If we really blanket it down with full on overcast or even storm clouds well let's have a quick look here you can see interestingly enough the storm clouds are better than when we just had a few clouds the reason for that of course is well look on screen what can you see absolutely nothing but weather can play a huge part in the fps and the performance Let's just pop this back to some high clouds as uh, as it just settles back down again. And not many clouds and we're back up to a decent healthy FPS rate. So weather is a difficult variable to try and quantify. But if we said anywhere between 20 FPS and above is how that can affect it. Okay, so now let's have a look at the different aircraft available to us in Microsoft Flight Simulator and how that can affect things. So all of our tests so far have been done with a Cessna just on the ground, which has been out of shot. Let's try it with the Phoenix A320. So straight away, you can see, originally we were hauling anywhere between 60 and 65 FPS, loading in the Phoenix aircraft. This is their A320. Look at the huge huge hit that has given us. That has given us a 20 FPS hit, just changing the aircraft from a default Cessna to the highly advanced Phoenix A320. Now, I know many people have complained about the performance optimization of the Phoenix A320, and it's difficult to argue against when you see that performance impact. I then decided to spawn in with the PMDG 777-300ER and we can see that that had only around a 10 FPS impact. So obviously different levels of airliners and how detailed they are does play an effect. Next then, I needed to move somewhere a little bit more built up as I wanted to test out just how much photogrammetry has an effect. We're in Liverpool, which has just recently been given a world update with new photogrammetry scenery. At the moment, I've got it turned off and we're holding around 53 FPS. Again, this is with no traffic, clear weather and my trusty Cessna just off screen. Let's go into the settings then and see just what effect photogrammetry has when it is turned on. As you can see, we're turned off at the moment. Let's wait for this to load in and see how it affects things. So there we go, photogrammetry is on and the city looks superb. And look at the FPS that we're getting. It has hardly changed. That is a huge shock to me. I expected the photogrammetry to be much more of an FPS draining device. However, it seems that actually everything is looking very nice, very smooth, following turning that back on. And even as I move around, we can see this stunning detail now with the new world update. And we're not really suffering FPS wise, which I think is amazing and a delightful surprise. For my final test then, I wanted to stay in Liverpool. This is a handcrafted airport edition from Azobo, still with our clear weather and our trusty Cessna, holding around 56 FPS. And next, I wanted to add 
traffic to it. Now, traffic is for me provided by FSLTL and also FS traffic models. So if I turn that on, I've set it to quite high. We should see some static traffic arriving shortly. It will also inject some aircraft overflying as well. Just let this settle down and we'll see what the FPS remains at. Now all that traffic has been injected, you can see that that has given us an FPS hit of about 25 FPS. It does drop lower than that when the aircraft are of course being injected live into the sim, but it then eventually stabilizes itself. We've got about 100 aircraft injected into the sim at the moment, not just here at Liverpool, but also nearby Manchester Airport, and of course aircraft also overflying us as well. It's long been known though that aircraft injected into the sim is a big FPS trainer, but hopefully this has given you some idea as to how, just how much that will affect your performance. So it's probably fairly obvious the things that we've tested and tried out, they're all going to affect performance and that's not really anything new, but I did find it interesting to see what affects the performance the most. So the next time you're flying in a heavily populated area with lots of airliner traffic around through maybe a lot of thick layers of cloud, then you probably can expect to have some FPS drops. If you have your level of detail cranked all the way up, that is really going to destroy those frame rates as we saw early on in the video. And with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 just around the corner, it's going to be very interesting to maybe compare this video with a similar kind of video and see just what has been tweaked for the better. Now, as I said at the start, everybody has a different PC. You will probably get slightly different results to those that I've had in this video, and I would love to hear from you. So please do leave your comments down below. Let me know what your biggest FPS killers are and any hints and tips or tweaks you might have in order to mitigate those and improve performance. Lots of people will hopefully be able to benefit from this as well. A reminder, of course, before you go, if you are looking to shop on the Contrail store, don't forget to use our special discount code, and there's a link in the video description down below, saving you some money on your spends, and also the link for our channel partner, Inibills, also down below in the video description. Anything you purchase using this link also helps support the channel as well. Massive thanks to everybody who purchases via these links. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you have found this video of some use. And of course, if you have, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our future videos and of course, live streams. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all again in the next one. Bye bye for now.